Welcome back everybody. This video is all about the beginning stages of setting up the shed to accept off-grid electrical power. Now, just a warning, I'm not a licensed electrician, so definitely do your own research, but I did put forth a few hours of offline and online research to try to understand some of my local electrical codes. In a way, I won't be going into great detail for how or why I installed everything in this video, but I will leave some links in the description below to some helpful online resources for those wanting to do their own electrical work. Now, since it may be a little while before I start adding drywall to the shed, I decided to go ahead and wire up all my outlets so I can go ahead and start using the building for other purposes.
I went ahead and attached my ceiling lights so I could verify there were no electrical issues and to see if the four recessed lights would provide enough light for the shed. When it came to the shed's power source setup, I wanted to keep things simple and interchangeable so that I could power my entire shed using any portable power station on the market that contained a standard AC outlet. But we'll dive more into what I mean later in the video. So to create my concept, I had to put my DIY hat on and make my own electrical box that would hold the L5-30 socket. Now I chose this socket type because it can handle a higher amperage which would allow more growth for the system in the future if needed. Now I definitely should have been wearing gloves during this part but it was late and I really wanted to have this part done before the next day. The other reason I went through all this effort is because when I eventually add drywall to the shed, I wanted the socket to be flush with the wall for a nice appearance. After everything was installed, I was really pleased with the results, so it was now time to test out the electrical circuits. So to provide power to the shed, I purchased several different adapter cables that would allow me to go from an L530 connection to a 5-15P or 5-20P connection. This will basically allow me to plug the connection into the socket I created and plug the other end into whatever portable power station I wanted to use. Once that's completed, I can flip the breakers on for all my circuits and voila, the entire shed now has power and is feeding off the portable power station. So after I wire up any electrical outlet, I always use a receptacle tester to check my work and I soon found out my outlets were showing an open ground. So after some research, I found the issue wasn't with any of my wiring, but the fact that most portable power stations do not have the neutral and ground bonded. So to fix this issue was quite simple since the company Southwire makes a ground bonding plug that can be plugged into the power station to create the neutral ground bonding that is needed. I really like this non-permanent solution since I wanted to leave my main electrical panel wired as a sub panel in case in the future I wanted to feed power to the shed from my home. Lastly, I checked my GFCI outlet to make sure it was working correctly as well as the outlets connected to the GFCI. As I mentioned before, what I really like about this power setup is that if I want to, I can easily swap out the current power station with a different one in less than a minute and the shed has off-grid power again. This makes upgrading my system much easier in the future. For me, this is one of the accomplishments I've been waiting for the longest as I've always wanted to feel as though I had a space somewhere that was completely off-grid. Now I still have a long way to go based on my vision for this space, but this was an amazing milestone to be able to check off. In a way, if you found this video useful or maybe entertaining, be sure to bump that like button and if you haven't already, please subscribe to encourage YouTube to share this video with others and to support this channel. Well that's all for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.